One of the benefits of using models or, or any data automation process is that you can easily add to or edit your uh, much larger GIS project just by changing something in the model. So here we are, um, probably where you are in your um, quest toward your site suitability pro final project um, at the start. So we mentioned in the in last class that I was going to be looking at um, uh, best location for a new airport in San Diego County. Um, so what I've started doing is just doing some data prep. We talked a lot about environmental, social, cultural, economic, um, transportation um, type criteria that I'll need for my model. Um, but right now I'm just starting simple by prepping, um, doing data cleaning, data preparation for my environmental factors. So I went through the Sandus website and I pulled off a couple data sets. So you can see that I have um, parks here, I have environmentally sensitive areas, um, and when they were originally on my, oops, on my map, let's just close my model for a second. Um, yes. Um, when they were originally on my map, they all went outside of San Diego, let's turn this off. Uh, they were all, some of them were outside of San Diego County, like let's pull the parks, regular parks back in. You can see that it was outside of the border. Since I don't want to consider locations for the airport that are outside of the border of the county, I just used a simple clip tool. And I put that into my, oops, put that into my model because um, I just want to keep a, tra a nice track of everything I'm doing. Come on. Um, so I can open up and edit that model by right cl clicking on my model and going to edit and we'll see that model that we saw before. Um, it's just the start of the data prep, just a couple of those environmental areas, um, parks, environmentally sensitive areas, and I realized that um, uh, wetlands are not included in that, uh, in the environmentally sensitive areas. So um, you can see also when I added wetlands into my map, it went outside of the boundaries of the county, and this does take a second to load, um, but I guarantee it goes outside. Hopefully you remember from before. Well, it'll eventually load. So what do we need to do? We need to clip that down, and then um, I'll explain the buffer in a second. So we need to look for that clip tool. Clip analysis, drag it in. We can just drag our wetlands in as the input. We can drag in the county as the clip features. Um, we can use our great lineup and auto layout buttons. So this will automatically lay it out nicely. And then this button here is fit. It'll help you fit to the screen. Um, sometimes it works better than others. <sighs> so let's zoom in over here. But here we are with our clip. So we could see that we can go in and further edit it if we want to check where it's being saved, if we want it to just say, to keep with our naming convention, SD wetlands. And then we can see that hasn't been run yet. So we could go ahead and run this process, just this one section of the model if we wanted. And it's gonna take a second because it's a big file. And that took a couple seconds, but you can see that it's completed. And you can see now that it has the drop shadow telling us this portion of the model ran. Um, if we want that wetlands layer to display, remember you have to click right click on the output and click add to display. So we can remove this wetlands because it takes forever to load. So this will take hopefully a little bit shorter of a time period, though maybe not. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's starting to load. Okay, so it's still going to take forever, but that's okay. Um, all right, so let's go. Let's go back to opening up our model, and I can talk about what I wanted to do next. Right-click, edit. So I started thinking about this airport stuff, um, and I don't have all the answers yet, but with my environmental data, I figured I didn't want the airport sitting directly on top or on the border of any of these sensitive ecosystems. So I thought I would add a buffer um, and use that as part of my uh, site suitability. So not just the park, but maybe a little bit around it. But I'm not quite sure how big I want that buffer to be. Um, so you can see I've added in some parameters here. Um, so what are parameters? Parameters are a way to control some of the inputs for your model. Um, adding parameters makes it easy to adjust 
for example, distance of buffers or for later in our model weights, because um, it basically tells the model to, it pauses the model um, and asks for your input basically. Um, it's also great for people that don't know a lot about GIS. It allows them to easily uh, run through the model without having to think too hard. So we need to add in our buffer. We need one more buffer around our wetlands. Um, and our input, oops, use our connector, input, features, open it up. Um, we'll name it, how am I naming these? I think buffer, oh, uh, all different ways. Buffer, so this is, we'll call it wetlands buffer. SD. Okay, um, and right now all my buffers are set to a half mile. So I'll just leave that here and leave the dissolved type as all. And go ahead and click OK. All right, so now what we can see is that we've got our three buffers in here, but I don't have the parameter set for um, uh, wetlands. So what this does, what parameters do is, uh, again, prompt you to ask a question about um, your analysis. So what I did was I right-clicked on the tool. I wrote make a variable from a parameter, and I picked distance. That's not available now because I want to have the option to change the distance for my buffers if I so chose. Um, let me scooch that up here, and we'll go ahead and make this a parameter. So it has a little P. So all the distances now have the parameters in front of it. Um, so do, 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 we'll rename it to wetlands. Oh, I'm dropping something. Buffer distance. Okay. So now we could go ahead and run our model from here, or we have that option to save it, close it, close out of here, and we'll go back to our model. And this time if we just open it, instead of double clicking on it, you'll see that model parameters pop up. So this is a way for us to go easily go into our model and change it. So let's say, you know, half mile wasn't quite enough, or maybe it was too much. Maybe we didn't want as big a buffer around parks as we did around um, environmentally sensitive areas or wetlands or something. So we can go in and change that. Oh, we have to run it. Um, what are my errors? Hang on. So what this is actually, this is a great teaching moment. Um, these errors are pretty helpful. So it's telling us a couple things. Um, these errors are telling us the output feature class already exists, already exists, does not exist. Um, so the ones that are easy to fix right away are these output feature class data sets. So we can go ahead and go cancel out of here, go into our model. Oops, that's what I wanted to do. Edit the model. And we can set the outputs as model parameters. So we could um, also be asked, uh, they'll ask us for the inputs and then ask us for the outputs. We needed to rename them. So I'm just turning these into parameters. Okay, so let's save and close, and we'll troubleshoot that other error. Okay, so this is a little out of order because we did these out of orders, but, uh, or we did it anyway. So we can see our buffer distances. Again, we could change if we wanted this to be larger or smaller. We could, say, just for the sake of argument. Um, so these are um, telling us that these files have already been created. So we can go ahead and for simplicity, just add a two right now. We'll also talk about um, overwriting in another moment. That one seems to be fine. Let's see, anything else I forget? So let's hit okay and see what the errors are now. So our inputs does not exist. So which ones? Environmental sense of areas, wetlands. Okay, so we need to, oh, close out of here. And I, silly me, didn't leave them in our map. So I'm going to add them back in real quick. Back in wetlands. What was the other one? Parks. Um, ESAs would be my guess. Concerns and wetlands are still in there. Okay. Oops. Do, do, do. Come back. So let's reopen our model. Alright. Just keep 
keeping it simple. Let's see if we can get those errors to go away. Okay. So now our model is executing and you can say it's running through 16 steps. So the 16 steps on our model. I'm going to pause our video because as you know, this will take a moment or two. But you can see it's working its way through it, all through all the different steps, buffering polygons. All right, so we can see that our model mostly completed. Um, we have our um, the parks buffer, the ES, the environmentally sensitive areas buffer. We have um, wetlands in the San Diego County that were clipped. Um, the only thing that didn't work, or it was just taking forever and I got bored, um, was the buffer of the wetlands. So I think what I need to do um, is dissolve some of these fields just so I have one uh, wetland layer or maybe one or just dissolve by wetland type because um, I think that would speed it up a bit. Um, but we can see that having those parameters is helpful because if I thought like, gee, that buffer around... Um, is that blue buffer around the environment? Oh, my program might be crashing. <laughs> that buffer around the environmentally sensitive areas, that's too big. Or the wetlands buffer of a mile is, you know, too big. So we could easily go back and change it if we needed to. Um, we also can, you know, like I said, I want to um, dissolve the wetlands down. I can just add that tool in really easily. Um, and, and reformat my model a bit. Um, um, so we could add that in, uh, move, uh, change the inputs here. <sighs> what do we want? We want wetlands to be the input here. Wetlands, dissolve, input features. Um, anyway, so we could work through this as well. We want to dissolve by the wetlands type. Um, and then try running that model again. Um, but, and then this would be the input for this tool. Uh, anyway, so hopefully that makes sense why you'd want to use parameters. I think when you are thinking about um, how you're going to weight your model, it'll be helpful too. Um, so, so two reasons. One, easy to change stuff. Two, if the person knows nothing about GIS, they don't even have to look at the model. They just have to look at um, what linear distance they're using and uh, what they're naming their outputs as, or if they need to adjust it. Um, all right.